Okay, so this is a real life patient and he has a real life injury. First place he went after the injury was to the clinic. So this kind of stuff will walk into your office. P please be 100% clear on that. This kind of stuff can walk directly into your office and you have to know how to recognize it first of all and then the appropriate follow up with that patient, okay? All right, so Bob, tell us, tell us what happened if you will. Give away the whole mystery. Well, not, not, the whole, not the whole mystery, but just the okay. initial, don't give it all away, but just so we can kind of build you mean, up around you it. You mean like I, the fell, yeah, yeah, how mean it like I <laughs> fell off a ladder? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fell off a ladder. Can you, can you imagine that? <laughs> I was doing some work over across the hall there, and I was doing something, you know, my shoulders were basically up inside the T-bar space. And I was just trying to do some stuff up there in a bit of a hurry, and, uh, you know, just got off top dead center and kabang, that fell down. Okay, and when did this happen? Well, at this point, it's, it's now two weeks ago, so it's not nearly as dramatic as it was yep. then. And although it's pretty dramatic to me um, when I'm not, uh, when my dilaudins are like every four hours at the end of every four hours, it's still pretty dramatic. So this, that's a pain medication that he's taking to deal with the, the issue? Yeah. Okay. So, so tell us what happened. You fell off the ladder, how you got up, everything like that. Uh, well, I fell off the ladder, stars, thing. oh my God, you know, very free, very free movement of my hand. It's either dislocated or broken. So I laid down on my back and probably laid there for about five minutes just trying to see what I could actually move. And then I realized, okay, I can probably get over on this side. And I, gra I got myself up and of course, shock takes over right away. So it was... I knew something big had happened, but it wasn't like, ah, it was just like, oh my God, you know. And so I got myself all together and walked over to the clinic. <laughs> and they said, oh, what happened to you? And uh, they, they, really, they, they, their response was quite quick, actually. He says, you know what, you're going to need an x-ray. We really, there's not much we can do. Sent me off to St. Paul's. So. Okay. So how did you make that, that uh, decision so quick? I mean, the biggest thing that we're trying to learn here that you guys have already seen, I gave it away because it's the first time we've seen it. I mean, this yeah. is Anatomy 1 and we've already gone through it. A fracture screen is how they came up to that decision so quick, right? Yeah. So the first thing you do is you ask a history. So the history includes, how old are you, Bob? 72. 72. And you fell off of a ladder that was probably, we'll say, 9 feet high, something like that? My feet were probably... You know, my feet were probably three feet off the ground. Yeah, yeah. So it's still, so still some yeah, decent height. Yeah. yeah. All right. And did you hear any snapping or popping at the time of injury? I might have. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Not sure. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Well, that's what. That's where I was at. Was that a snap or a pop? Yep. <laughs> you know? Okay. So we've gone through a brief history right there. Any other questions you'd want to ask? You might also ask if the, you'd go through your fracture screen. So let's just present, pretend he really presented with this. What I would do is I would ask that question and then I would look at the area. Okay, and Bob, if we can, we'll actually undo your, undo yeah. your straps here. Okay. So you'd roll up the sleeve and you'd have a look. And now this is actually much better than it was originally. Oh, yeah, it was all... Okay. Everything was this color or better. <laughs> yeah. So just so everybody's clear, you can just see a little bit of bruising up here in the upper portion. You can also see a little bit of bruising coming down into the arm right here. His whole arm was this color, and then I believe it was also uh, was 24 hours afterwards. It was swollen up. It was really swollen. Yeah. I, I love the way you described it. You basically said you looked like the Michelin Man on this side, all okay, the way down, all the way down right, his arm, right, right to my hand actually. Yeah. Like... Even right now, if you do an inspection, if you look at his one hand to, compared to the other, you can see good tendon definition on the back of this hand, and on the back of that hand, it's still puffy two weeks out. Okay, all right, so that gets you through that initial part of the assessment. Now you can see we're two weeks out and he's actually moving the arm around a little bit here. So you kind of wonder what's the motion available for this person. So the first thing I would do is go into an isometric test. And what does that isometric test entail? Whatever position he's in, ask him to push into your hand. Can you push into my hand? That's it. Okay, so you can see the look of determination on his face. You think something's going to happen, yeah. but he can't develop any force because the pain it causes in the arm. That is very pathognomonic to indicate fracture was there. Okay, but let's just say you still weren't sure. What else could you do? You could also move into some basic palpation if you wanted to. Now, 
Junior physicians and therapists, when they first see a bruise like this, they are very hesitant to touch that area. What I would suggest you do is you start distal from it and slowly work your way proximal to it. The other thing you'll notice that I'm doing is I'm actually looking at the patient, not necessarily where my hands are. I'm watching him for any signs of pain or discomfort, right. okay? And realistically, if this was in practice, I would have said, if anything is painful or uncomfortable, please let me know right away. And I'm going to do a hands-on assessment if that's all right. So the patient is fully aware of what's going on with this, this next uh, procedure, okay? I usually like to start a little bit distal. You can kind of feel there is a certain bogginess in the tissue. And I'm just doing a light palpation to start with to see how he's doing, okay? And there's definitely muscle tightness, and you can feel the actual contusion in that area. Yeah, I think that's really the, that's yeah. the locale. Yeah, and then back up to here, I can feel more normal tissue density right here. So I'm just going to push in a little bit, Bob, again. Yeah, you tell yeah. me if it's too much. No. Nope. You fine. can feel, you can just feel a huge mass of scar and hematoma in that area and a lot of muscle yeah. spasm. But I, you can see what I'm doing. I'm digging into that area, right? Junior therapists and doctors, what happens? Really light touching, don't want to get into it. Not really that diagnostic for you if you do that. Start that way for sure, but then eventually get a little bit deeper into the area. Okay? Yeah. You know, I can see half the people in the class are leaning forward right now. I would love it if you just let out a big scream right yeah. in there, right there. They, all, they all just jump back, okay? All right, but yeah, we should plan that ahead of time. Yeah. Really, really. Yeah. You know, this, this is well on. I'm actually yeah. quite impressed with how it's... Yeah, like I'm pushing way harder than the last time yeah. we did this even, oh, yeah, so yeah, that's absolutely. really good. Yeah. And even if I dig right into there, yeah. that's, that's excellent, actually. You're getting close, though, Yeah. with your thumb. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's kind of, that's definitely the... Yeah. So the other thing I want to point out, yeah, is we have kind of point, key point tenderness here, but most of the bruising actually actually is down here, okay? What happens is all of this fluid, because of gravity, winds up spreading throughout the limb, okay? So don't think because there's a, a lot of bruising here that it's necessarily the site where the injury is. The bruising is usually, especially in gravity-dependent injuries like this, a little bit more proximal, okay? Next thing you could do is you could pull out a tuning fork, and we'll just, if you can just pass me that uh, pink highlighter right there. Percent, we'll pretend this is a tuning fork. What would I do? I would start distal from the site. I would go ahead and put it on the distal end of his radius right here and see if he had any numbness or pain or anything with that with it. No pain. Then I'd go to the distal end of the ulna, see if there's any pain with that. Then I would come over top and find his olecranon, strike it again, see if there's any pain or tenderness with that. And then I would go to the epicondyles. Okay? I go to the lateral epicondyle, vibrating tuning fork, and put it on there and see if that caused the bone to vibrate and caused any pain. Okay. My guess is there's, there's, some, there's something happening here and there's something happening here. Yeah. Is what I, yeah. I mean, realistically, the history and his inability to move would have been enough to warrant x-rays like it was upstairs. A couple of other things that you could do is you could ask the patient to move it for you. I'm always hesitant to do this in injuries like this because you could be moving around loose fragments or potentially cause more injury than is already there. So the isometric testing is a better choice. However he presents, and in fact, what I liked about the last time we did this with your initial presentation was how you hold your hand. If everybody watches, it looks like he has good motion because he can move his arm up and down. But if you take that other hand away oh, yeah. and try and move it by yourself, what happens? There's no strength at all. Yeah, he can't lift it up at all. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you can get confused because you think, oh, look, he can flex and extend his elbow, but it's really the good hand that's moving the bad hand up and down. Okay. The other thing that I liked that you did was he actually used this hand to hold his coat. When he first presented, you actually grab, you grab oh, yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah. It's my whole survival strategy now is what can I be grabbing on to? to uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so all these are little tips that you can pick up that kind of signify the significance and severity of this injury. Uh, anything else that I would really perform for this patient? I mean, that's enough to get a diagnosis. Of Even the way he walks in, right? You can tell he fails a four-step test because he has to hold his arm like this. He can't swing his arm from side to side. If you really wanted to, yeah, maybe you could go into range of motion. We're two weeks out now, so the bone has started to weave and heal back together. But I could, and to your tolerance, I'm just going to try and turn your arm out, turn your arm in, sure. let me know what happens, okay? Yeah. These torsional forces are what really cause pain in bones when you do this, so you have to really watch this. And you can see the apprehension on his face. Yeah, it's not, it's not hurting yet. No, but you're, yeah. it's, this is actually way better than last time. And I can oh, actually yeah, feel, definitely, definitely. I can feel the strength in your hand, I'm getting too. To the, I'm getting to, that's getting to the end of the range of motion. It's, yeah. it's tightening up right up there. Yeah, and so he yeah, feels that pain right. up there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, any other questions on this case? Actual diagnosis from x-ray was? Three break in three places. Three fractures of the humerus, okay? Yeah. Uh, we'll see the x-rays later on, but basically I believe it was a probably going to be a fracture here, here, yeah. and multiple fragments all the way I'm through wondering. there. I'm wondering. I'm thinking up and down, but it was really, I just piled yeah. right onto that. So Yeah, and how much, how much do you weigh? Well, 180. Yeah, so yeah. 180 pounds. He's about 6 feet okay. tall, 5'11", dropping off of a ladder like that. So, okay. That is significant trauma. Okay. And, 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 and the, the, the state of the... Um, 
of the bruising is coming along very nicely. My my sweetie is a TCM uh, enthusiast, so yep. we've been using a TCM liniment, which has uh, yep. been really yeah. Really good. Yeah, and so back back to what's the relevance for you guys in practice? Relevance is recognition of it first, referral out for the X-rays and appropriate follow-up. What I'm surprised, and actually, let's go through that. The um, ER doctor's recommendation. You first <laughs> thought there was going to be pinning in it, but go ahead, just tell everybody that because it's good for them to hear. That's right. I had a really good experience at St. Paul's. The first the first time through was great. They saw me right away, got me in, got me on meds right away. So they were they they were able to do X-rays within a, within an hour and a bit. You know, I settled down and and they did the x-rays so then the the, the initial resident came in and said oh broken in three places you know have to have to immobilize totally probably going to be plates or screws or whatever and we're going oh my god you know there goes my uh, golf career and my you know my guitar future and all that kind of thing and we're just kind of absorbing that information and another young fellow comes in and uh, and he's talking about, well, you know, I can't even remember how he made the transition, but it wasn't even clear to me what he was talking about because he was saying, okay, and then you'll just be able to go home. I said, you mean you're going to be out, operate tonight? He said, no, 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 we don't operate on this kind of stuff anymore. We just, we give you meds and we let, because, I get probably because this is a clear cut case. I mean, that we're good up to here, gravity, gravity holds us in place, immobilization with a sling. This must have been a good candidate. It for is. That approach. I mean, there'd be minim minimal displacement too. That's the other issue, right? If it was really displaced, then they would have to go in for that. And He'd that's also the big seen thing. the X-rays. Yeah. Too, so I guess yeah. he knew that I was in pretty good position to, yeah. to leave it as was. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that treatment. Really. Like, I mean, the other thing is he doesn't even have the firm cast on, right? What does this mean? It means he's actually going to have a more productive healing pathway to go down because he's yeah. still able to get some mobility of that limb. If this yeah. was hard casted, oh. there would be atrophy, scar tissue formation like crazy that he yeah. just doesn't need. And especially once you add the surgery, I'm really glad that the other physician came in and kind of oh. went through that for you because you could imagine going down the other pathway. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Don't get me wrong, surgery is warranted in some cases, but it's not in a case like this, absolutely not warranted. Yeah. Okay. What's the big thing for the hard casting is to prevent further injury. So he has to watch. Like he's been given very strict instructions not to be going up ladders. <laughs> no, I won't do that. Okay. Not to be going up ladders or anything like that because the worst thing would be for him to fall down even any way to fall down on this arm and it would cause a significant injury that could actually fully penetrate the skin and lots of other nasty things we don't want to think about, right? Yeah, but this is a really good case. If you want to accelerate the healing for a patient like this, the key thing is making sure the appropriate nutrition is there. Now realistically, I know that this guy eats pretty good. North American diet, you might just want to make sure that they're absorbing enough calcium. They're eating a lot of high collagen protein sources to help put this back together. Vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin, uh, K. vitamin K for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we have, I'm on quite yep. a regimen. My, my TCM girl has got me on quite yep. a regimen. Of, uh, Excellent. Okay. Um, healing aids. So there's nutrition. The second thing would be range of motion. Now you think fracture, you're going to move around a fracture? No, I'm not moving around the fracture. I'm moving around the muscles that are in that area to maintain normal muscle elasticity and avoid scar tissue formation. So even basic motion that he does, when he picks his other arm up and does this, that's one of the best things he can be doing. Okay. When he turns out to the point where he almost experiences pain and then comes back in, fantastic stuff to do. If you're hard casted, guess what? You don't do any of that, and you delay the whole healing process by weeks, months, even years in some cases if the adhesions get really bad in that area. Okay. Other things that you could do eventually, you're going to work on rehab of breaking up the scar tissue formation over top of this, over top of this area, and then normal muscle strengthening. And then you have to ask yourself, well, why did he fall off of this ladder? Is there some type of proprioceptive issue or something like that that I should be aware of too for this patient? There's a whole avenue that you can go down. TCM acupuncture points are going to be huge for this too, for muscle relaxation, promoting chi form uh, flow in the area. Definitely important. Okay. It's an opioid that he's taking for the pain. So short-term use of opioids is actually kind of warranted for these for these cases. Uh, my one concern would be longer-term use and addiction potential for it. So, yeah. My my regular doctor is a bone guy actually, and he said his original research was on uh, use of electromagnetic impulses yeah. and bone healing. That's and a he good said, point. You know, you're well along on this, so I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. But he was saying that that opiates. He rarely sees anything with of like any addiction complications in using using the opiates for pain. Yep. Directly. Yeah, for a short term. When you're done, you're done, you know. Yeah. I, I, I don't feel like there's I don't feel like there's any buzz out of this at all. I feel like it's just like, okay, fine, I'm, I have to be careful, but I have the control of my body back. 
The other thing you can do too is uh, electrotherapies, including microcurrent, have been shown to increase osteoblastic activity mm -hmm. and fibroblastic activity, so that can also promote healing as well. Okay, electroacupuncture would do the same thing. Okay, there's lots of avenues here. It's for you to decide what's going to work well for this patient. So, yeah, grab uh, my elbow there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> grab yeah. the just swing that thing around. So I can get this yep. back on. Okay. Yep. So I'd like a uh, round of applause for Bob for coming in. <laughs> okay. Really, okay. I mean, I mean really, I mean, it, at the end of the day, it's terribly embarrassing to have done something yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, good stuff. The other, one other thing I want to say too, even for his healing, is just we'll have you sit down here for one second. Even yeah. when you watch, even when you watch Bob move his hands around and stuff like this, he's still active. He's still engaged in a community. Right? This is all part of the healing process. If he broke his arm and he was at home and depressed and isolated and things yeah. like that, you could definitely see how this whole process would take longer and could have more negative outcomes. Right? If you watch him talk, he's happy to share this with you guys. You see the way his hands move. This is going to be a productive healing outcome, something you want to shoot for for every patient. Oh, yeah. Okay. The other thing is, you know, there is so much that I'm actually aware of that I can do, and I do do because I really don't want to be freezing up. You know, yep. I, yep. I realize that really is a, a risk. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, you yeah. can see that you just the way you move your body, the way your yeah. posture is, and the way that you're walking is excellent. So I'm really glad to see it. So okay. All right. Good stuff. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Bob. <laughs>